Good morning everyone and welcome to a day in my life as a freelance solo mum. It's quarter to eight now and I've just finished dropping Orin off at his nursery and I figured that for this week's day in the life I would do my vlog on one of my work days rather than one of the days that Orin is here and I thought it might be interesting for you guys to see kind of what my, my work day looks like as a freelancer. So it is Thursday, I currently work two days a week, I work on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, my parents have him on a Tuesday and then he goes to nursery on a Thursday. Thursday is my slightly longer work day too because on a Tuesday my parents will pick him up for me at around 9am in the morning and then I go and pick him up kind of around 5 p.m. in the evening but on a Thursday his nursery is open from 7 30 till 6 30 and you have to pay for the whole day regardless of how many hours you use so depending on what time he wakes up in the morning I usually take him straight there um, and then I will pick him up usually around 5 30 because he needs to go to bed around 6 and I like to have him here and have a bit of time to play with him and have a bit of time for him to compress decompress before I actually put him to bed so this morning he woke up just before 7 which means I was able to actually get him to nursery pretty much for 7 30 when it opened I want one of the great things about nursery is they will do all his meals today so they will do breakfast lunch dinner and snacks and bottle in between so this is the one day that i don't have to think about anything when it comes to feeding him which is actually quite nice so the first things i need to do today is have some breakfast and i also need to go through my to-do list and make sure i've got everything on it and i have a feeling i've got a pretty busy work day today so let's get straight on in i'm not gonna lie i think a lot of today is just gonna be me sitting here on the sofa with my laptop working so my current routine is on tuesdays i film a sit down video and then I edit in the afternoon and on Thursdays I do my client work, I'm a freelance social media manager, I do some client work in the morning and then I edit a video in the afternoon. So I have to edit a video every day each of my work days because the editing is the bit that takes the most time and it's a bit that I really need to like properly focus in on um, and the other stuff I kind of work around that. So today is Thursday so I need to do some um, client work and then start the editing but both of those are laptop based. I have potentially got a meeting with one of my clients at 10am this morning, although they haven't got back to me so I'm not 100% sure if that's going to go ahead or not. But I've just turned my laptop on and opened my emails and the the nursery that Orin goes to, they basically have like a, I don't know, like a family hub wall thing. So they kind of have like a feed that's just for you and um, where you can see pictures of your little one and Orin was really quite upset when I handed him over this morning he's still he does really well when he's at nursery but the drop-offs and the pickups he still tends to cry when I drop him off he cries and when he first sees me at the end of the day he cries and reaches for me which you know it's, it's nice that I'm his safe space but it's still really difficult to see and uh, his key worker is just posted a picture of him having a nice time so that's lovely it makes me feel a bit better okay so my to-do list for the day is I need to create a thumbnail for Friday's video it's Thursday today um, so this is tomorrow's video, so I, that's quite a high priority. I need to put that video live for members, because if you're a member of my channel, you get access to videos a day early. I need to send out my invoices to my clients. I need to create some posts for my clients. I need to finish editing the video that I started on Tuesday and didn't quite finish. I need to try and start and finish a video, a separate video for later today. And then because Tuesday and Thursday are the two days I have that are orange free, I try to get some of my other jobs done in those days too that are more difficult to do when he's around. So I also need to do a toy rotation. I'll explain a bit about what that is later. I need to put away his old clothes that he's grown out of. They're currently stuffed into one of the Calyx units in his room and it, there's no more room in it. I need to actually bag them up and put them up into storage. Uh, but that's something that's very difficult to do when he's around because if I have him in the room with me, he'll just be pulling everything out and it's going to take me a little while. I don't want to do it while he's here. So I definitely want to try and get that done today. And the other thing I need to do is wash his clothes because it's Thursday and that is orange clothes wash day. So that is what is on my to-do list for today. There are a few other things that are on my personal to-do list, but I think I'm going to leave that they're not like urgent things that need doing and I think I could do them in the evening um, when orange here. So I don't want to waste one of my um, baby free days to, to do that. So I'm not feeling hungry yet so I don't think I want any breakfast I might just get myself a little drink and then I'm gonna crack on with some of this so I've just finished doing the first three things on my list and I also made them like the easiest I find that the best way to get through if I've got a list of a relatively long list of things to do on a particular day or a lot of stuff I need to get done I find the easiest thing to do is to put 
all the easily achievable tasks first so I can tick them off quickly because then I feel like I've started making real progress into my list and it's kind of like a mental thing of like you just feel better. So of the six tasks that I had that were specifically like work related, three of them have now been ticked off. So I just have the last three which are the kind of more time consuming ones. So the two videos I've got to edit, those are two separate things and I've also got to uh, create the social media posts for my client. Um, that's going to take some time too. And then obviously the three things that are not specifically business related but I'm going to try and leave them until a bit later on because I kind of want to get through my work stuff first. Anyway I haven't had breakfast yet and now that it is quarter to ten I am starting to get a bit peckish so I think I'm going to take a break and go and do that now. I don't know why but I've just gone really cold. I think I'm still a bit tired but you know I have a kid. I'm always tired. I am really not a morning person. I have always worked far better like in the afternoon and in the evening. I quite often even before I had kids, used to work quite a lot in the evenings because that's where I get like my second wind and I kind of feel the most, I don't know, like just driven. But in the morning, I'm always a bit like, oh. I actually got a pretty good night of sleep last night. Oren didn't wake up. He's kind of in a transition phase where he's sometimes still waking up once in the night and sometimes not. And if he sleeps through, he typically wakes up, I don't know, between like 6.30 and 7.30. And if he wakes for a feed, he'll sleep a bit longer. He'll sleep till kind of like between seven and eight. And last night he slept through to almost seven, which is really good. But I'm still, like, it's so annoying. I'm still waking up in the night, either thirsty or sweating. I've got like the night sweats again. I turn my th thermostat down and I've worn like a really thin um, vest to bed now and that has helped. But yeah, it's really annoying because I'm like, I have a baby who's sleeping really well at the moment. Like he wakes up once sometimes, but one wake up is fine, I can deal with that. But he's a lot of the time sleeping through the night and I could be getting some really great sleep, but I'm still like just, something is just waking me up multiple times in the night. It's really, really annoying. But I don't think I was too bad last night. I definitely woke up one, at least once for a drink, but compared to some of the nights I've had recently, like nowhere near as bad. But yeah, in spite of that, still feeling a little bit tired. So that's a bit annoying. I'm actually debating whether to go back to bed for an hour and just have a bit of a nap because I'm feeling really tired, really shivery. I don't know if anyone else gets this, but like when I'm really quite tired, I go really cold, like I just shiver. I need like 100 layers and hot water bottles and stuff. And I feel a bit like that now. I don't think I'm sick. I don't feel like I'm coming down with anything, but I think I'm just a bit tired. I'm insanely privileged that I have such a flexible job and a flexible income and the way that I work can kind of be adapted to what I need. But the downside of that is that it's a creative job. And so a lot of the work that I do, I need to be in like a really creative mindset. I need to be thinking about, you know, even editing, not quite so much, but even with that, I do need to still be like, okay, how do I want to edit this? Um, do I want to add certain things in here? Like I need enough of a brain to kind of be aware of what I'm doing. And the same with some of my other work too, like when you're creating like graphics or like designs to go with social media posts, you need to have some creative vision for that. And so the days where you're not feeling as creative or you're feeling ill, it's just, it's virtually impossible to actually do that work without it being rubbish. So I think I am actually gonna go and have a nap for an hour. I've got through, I said, I've got through half of my work tasks already for the day. The other three are going to be longer, but they also need more of my attention. And I think I'm actually gonna be better at doing that if I feel a bit more rested. So I think on the balance, it'd be best to go and have a nap. And I'm lucky enough to work from home and I'm able to kind of set my own time schedule so I can do that. So I think that's what I'm gonna try doing now. Oh my goodness, that was 100% the right decision to make because when I got into bed, I was like literally shivering, like I said before, so really sh shivery. And by the time I've just kind of, I didn't, I don't think I slept, but I kind of dozed. And now I'm feeling really quite warm and that often happens when I've kind of caught up on the sleep that I've missed. So that was a good decision. I definitely feel in a much better frame of mind to take on the rest of my work now. I've also slightly annoyingly had a message from the nursery um, about him needing more nappies and wipes. And I'm a bit confused about that because I sent two packs of wipes in at the beginning when he first went to nursery. He's only there once a week and this must be his fourth or fifth week there. So he's got, they can't, I can't believe they've gone through two packs of wipes in that time. And also that he needs to have more nappies. They say you need to send at least five nappies in a day. But I did that. And last week, none of the nappies in his bag were used. So that is a mystery I need to get to the bottom of. I mean, it's not a big deal, but just I'm a bit curious as to what they put him in last week. Because he definitely had his nappy changed um, last week several times. Because you can, they have this online system where you can see it. But apparently they didn't use any of his. So I'm not sure what happened there. Right, I'm going to go get a drink, get settled and start doing some more work now. So it is about 20 past 11 now. And I've just had a phone call from the nursery. I sent them an email back responding to them saying that they were running out of nappies and wipes to him going, 
are you sure about this? Because I'm pretty sure like he has five nappies in his bag this week and he didn't use them last week and like I sent him in with two packs of nappies at the beginning and they just, the room manager just called me now to go, really sorry there's been a mix up. No, he has got enough nappies and he's got a full packet of wipes in his box. Someone had just put them in the wrong box. So all sorted. I was thinking that's a lot of wipes to get through in just five days worth of nursery. He had two packs there, but yeah, no, I was right. It was just a mix up. I'm currently working on some of the social media posts that I need to do for my client and I've got really far into that, so that's great. That nap that I had really did help. Like, I feel so much more alert now. It's funny because I was talking to my mum recently about this and somehow the conversation came up about like how much better I am now compared to when I was sick. But she said to me something that I found was interesting. She said, you know, when I think of like your health now, I feel like you're 98% better than you were when you were sick. And I was like, oh, that's odd because I feel like I'm pretty much back to myself. And she said, no, when you get sick, you still get come down with things, you still are a bit more vulnerable, I guess, to being hit harder by colds and other bugs and stuff. Like I just tend to take a bit longer to fight them off. And also my energy levels in the day are not what they once were. I mean, I'm in my mid twenties, so I still have friends who are like my age who can go out in the evening, go to, you know, go to bed quite late and then get up early in the morning and function on like a few hours of sleep. And they can just, they're not necessarily thriving in the day, but they can get through the day. Whereas I don't think I could possibly like physically do that. Sleep deprivation with children is a bit different because you're functioning, I mean, these work days, again, I'm very lucky, I'm very privileged, I can like work around them and take a nap if I need to. But even the days I have or in, if I'm a bit, if we've had a really rough night, I just adapt our day so it's a lot more chill so that I just sit on the sofa and um, watch and play. Or, you know, if I've got some meals that I've cooked already, I'll just bring them out so I'm not doing like lots of intense cooking for him or for me. You know, just, I adapt the day basically to work around us. Whereas I think actually some of my friends still have more stamina than I do. And I forget that quite often because I feel like a million times better than I did when I was ill. I forget that actually there are still things I have to do in the day to accommodate the fact that there are still some things that I struggle with. But I don't know, I think like anyone that's had a chronic illness will tell you this, like you just get used to making those adaptations so they just become your norm. And it's not until somebody else, like my mum points out to me some of the things that I do, that I'm like, oh yeah, like I do have to do that to get through the day or I do have to make that adaptation to work. And I guess for me, I'm just like, you know, it is what it is. I, I had Lyme as a teenager, I got some treatment and it got better. It's very difficult to cure chronic Lyme and it still affects certain parts of me, like in particular my liver. So I accidentally had a caffeinated drink a couple of weeks ago. I ordered a decaf and I forgot to check with the barista that it was decaf and it wasn't. And I was so ill that afternoon because I just, my body cannot handle caffeine. So that's another example actually. Like I avoid certain drinks, certain foods, like I have to always eat little and often. I can't go like big um, chunks of time without eating because it affects my blood sugar quite badly. I'm not anemic, I'm not diabetic, they're constantly testing my bloods just to be like double checking everything's okay because whenever I mention this they're like oh we need to do a blood test for that and I'm like no it's just it's just the after effects of Lyme, it's just my body like has these things that it can't do as well as it used to. But you get so used to adapting that you're just like hey you know this is what I have to do in the day to kind of get through. And I don't really consider myself to be sick anymore because the things that I do are so minimal and it's like, I just have to avoid certain foods and drink. I have to be careful about how often I eat and stuff. Um, and then like being <clears throat> flexible with my work, the kind of work I do, I have to work it around like, A, childcare, but that's a, you know, that's nothing to do with health, but also be like, when I'm best with my energy levels and when I'm best with producing my work and stuff and that's just what I've I've had to do and to be honest I've always had to do it and so it's just my norm. But yeah, I um, I just wanted to mention it because I don't think I really talk about my health anymore and if you're a newer subscriber here you might not have been aware of this, like I had Lyme disease in my mid to late teens and it took them four years to diagnose it and then when I was finally diagnosed I was put on quite a vicious course of antibiotics that actually made me quite ill. Um, and then eventually like started getting better and there are still things I do through my diet and like daily life and stuff to manage it. And one of those things is how I structure my work day um, and working flexibly. So that's that's one of the reasons that even when I ran my, my cloth pad business, Precious Stars, I structured it in a way that allowed me to only need, if I had a really bad day health wise, I only had to do like an hour's worth of work on it a day in the week. And the days I was feeling better, I'd you know do more hours and focus more on it and put more effort into it. And then it was like a trade off between the two. And even now, a lot of what I'm doing with my work is structuring it around 
having a child because I love being a parent and I personally really love the early stages as well. I love babyhood, I love toddlerhood, so I want to be around for as much of it as I possibly can. And so structuring my work so that it's very flexible, so I only have two solid days that I work and then if I need to do extra work in the evenings I can do, although at the moment I seem to be doing quite well in just keeping it to these two days which I'm actually really loving because it means I get those two days to focus on work and then the rest of the week is just you know me focusing on him and maybe the odd little bit in the evening but it's not just for working around him it's also for working around my health in general so one of my personal goals is that from this point on to only work part-time at the moment I'm doing two days a week but I would like I think in the future to go up to three days so my, my goal is to not work more than three days a week basically so I'm kind of at the moment seeing if that's something that's going to be possible if I can make that work kind of practically and financially in the long term we'll see but yeah I did just want to talk a bit about how working part-time it's not just about you know having a good work-life balance for me with looking after Orin which at the moment is definitely like my, my main priority but it's also about having a work-life balance that works for me with my general health and like I said I am so much better than I was but I don't want to risk getting back to that place because when I was really sick with Lyme it was it was not fun and it was not nice it is around one o'clock now I've just finished doing the main section of my client work I've still got a little bit I need to do on that next um so that'll probably be done in the next half an hour I think and then I can move on to some editing but I feel like I am actually making some progress now which is good so ugh, I'm not quite hungry yet. I think I want to finish doing these doing this um work first and then I'm gonna think about some lunch done it is 1 30 now and I have just finished my client work for the day so that's great so now all I've got to do work wise is edit two videos and then do some of the non-video related things that I also want to get done today. But first, lunch. Fun fact, spicy noodles and a Frankfurt sausage was my first ever pregnancy craving. If you haven't tried it, you're missing out, trust me. Okay, lunch break over. I can now move on to the first bit of editing I've got to do for the afternoon. And I realized that actually, some of the jobs that are on my list that are not work related I can possibly do this evening as well. Like the toy rotation I could do this evening and putting Orange's clothes in the wash I could do this evening. The thing that I really do want to do today while he's gone though is putting his clothes away. So the ones that are currently, like I said, in that Calex shelf, um, I want to sort that out. So that's the only thing I really need to do before I pick him up. But as I said, his nursery goes until 6.30. His bedtime though is kind of around 6, so I definitely want to pick him up before then. Um, so I've got until 5.30 to do that and it's only two o'clock now. I've got three and a half hours so I should be able to finish, I, I will definitely finish at least one of these videos. Don't think I'll finish the second one but I also should get a chance to put that stuff away. So I've managed to finish editing the first video. I actually had got more done on Tuesday than I thought I had so it didn't take me as long as I thought. It's currently uploading to YouTube now so I'm now going to tackle Orange's clothing. It's very dark in here because I've put up his black outline, the grow blind on his window because when the clock sprung forwards he was waking up earlier and I was like, I think you could sleep later. I think it's because it's really light. Because even though the back of these curtains that my mum made, they are technically blacked out, but like the light gets in from the bottom. So I thought I'll put this black up blind a blackout blind up and see what happens and he has slept way better since then he's kind of slept in much later at least until kind of like seven ish sometimes even later so if you're wondering why it's dark in here it's because i put that up so now i need to get these bags down and the clothes that are currently stuffed in this cupboard look it's literally completely full of them and i need to start sorting them into these bags I'm not being that fussy at the moment about like labeling the bags with particular ages. So like there's a zero to three, a three to six and so on and so forth here. They're just kind of roughly in, as he's gone through clothes, I've kind of, and grown out of them, I've put them into bags and then kind of moved them around. But because I'd like to have a second one, my current thinking is I'm gonna keep all the clothes from his first year because they go through clothes so quickly when they're a baby. I feel like it's a good idea to keep them. But then now that he's getting bigger, I'm probably not gonna keep quite as many. Right, so now I need to put these away again. So my current little clothing system is here, is any clothes that he grows out of, they get put into this little cupboard here, which I've just finished emptying out. 
and any of the clothes that are a little bit big for him that he's about to go into they go into this drawer down here and oh actually I've got more in there than I thought I did so this is currently like 12 to 18 month stuff he is 14 no 13 months old at the moment but he's always been quite small for his age so I think he's got another month or so until he grows into these he's kind of in that weird in between stage that they go through where he's a little bit too big for his 9 to 12 month stuff but he's still a bit too small for his 12 to 18 month stuff so I think at some point over the next few weeks I'm going to end up moving more of this into his uh, cupboard. But for now I'm going to add the extra bits that I found in those bags into here for when he gets a bit bigger. So I'm just going to tick that off my list, put the clothes away, oh love a good tick, love a good tick list. So at three o'clock with two and a half hours to go before I need to pick him up I have one more video I need to edit. I've got his toy rotation I need to do, but like I said, I could do that this evening, and I've got to put his clothes on to wash. So actually, I think I might grab his clothes and put them in the wash now. Clothes are in the wash, now I'm gonna get started on this second video. Guys, look at this baby hair. Like, it's just mad. Like, what is it doing? What is this doing? Of course, I've gone on to editing this next video that I need to do today, and I've just realised that this particular video needs me to do a voiceover. I've just put the washing on, so there's the washing machine going in the background, so I can't do that right now. So that wasn't particularly clever planning of me, but I have edited the majority of this video. It was a much shorter video than I thought it was going to be. Uh, so actually, that's worked out quite well. So once that is finished doing, hopefully, I will have time before I go to pick up Orient to do this voiceover, and then we're done for the day. And the only other thing that needs to be sorted after this is the toy rotation, but that's not a work thing, so I can do that later on. The washing machine has finally finished going round, so I thought while I have one more hour I would try and fit in the last of this recording and then I will have ticked off all my work jobs for the day. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Oh, it won't be working because it's not plugged in. Finished. I have done the editing. I'm just letting it upload now to my software before I upload it later on to YouTube to sit and wait for the right day to go live. But I now have around 20 minutes before, mm, not even that, about 15 minutes before I need to go pick up Orin. So I'm going to see if I can sort out some of the toy rotation now. So a toy rotation is basically where I leave certain toys out for a couple of weeks and then we'll change them and rotate them with some other toys that he has which I put away the rest of the time. This really helps if you have a lot of toys and you find that your little ones don't tend to play with toys, they tend to just pull them all out of a box or off a shelf or something and throw them on the floor but don't actually engage with them. Putting more of them away and just having a few out can really help with this and certainly I found with not just my own son but with like other, some of the foster kids I had too, it made a big difference. So it's something I'm a big fan of doing. So my first task is to try and tidy up all the toys here that he's been playing with recently. And I'm gonna have a look at some of the things that I think he is still playing with quite a lot and some of the things he's not really playing with. For example, this little set of like switches and buttons here. He's not really playing with this at the moment, so that's something I'm definitely gonna put away. But these balls and rattles, he's a big fan of these right now, so these are gonna stay out. Cars, he's just got into the point where he does this movement with them, which is quite sweet, so I'm definitely gonna leave out his vehicles and have a um, vehicle shelf here. This toy, he's not quite yet at the stage where he knows to push it in and do that. Also, I seem to have lost the other ones of these, the lying around here somewhere. So this one I think I'll take out too. These animals are with the Noah's Ark that I have here and I'm like, I'm a bit torn on this. I've already taken away some of the animals because there were loads in this kit and I think having less is better. I think he is still playing with this though so I'm gonna leave this out a bit longer. Okay, so I've just finished reorganizing and this is what it looks like. So here is what we now have out. Books I always keep stacked over here and actually there's a shelf up there where I can put some more if I feel we've got too many out which I might do. I've left this mirror out for a little bit longer. He's kind of playing with it, kind of not, but I've just left it because he does sometimes like to play with that. Obviously his walker he's still playing with and he's getting quite good at walking with that. I've switched out the ball trap that he had before for this one. He never really learned how to use this one so I'm really curious to see how he does with it now. So I've brought that one out and switched it. The Noah's Ark I've left out for a bit longer. There's some animals hidden under there. He loves playing with them. Up here I've put some stacking cups, those are always a big hit but they've been away for a little while. A basket full of balls here of various different shapes and sizes, he loves playing with them. Some cars and some trucks here to move around. A stacking set here because I think he's just about getting to the point where he's kind of good at this. I've got this rotating 
thing here. This came in one of his Love Every boxes um, that we very luckily get gifted for free because of being a content creator. Um, but he never really learned how to use that, so I've brought it out again now. And then I've left some of his soft toys out too because he does quite like to play with these as well. And what's quite nice is I think he's really getting to a point where he starts to notice when things have changed here. So it'll be interesting to see when I pick him up whether he does have a nice time with that. It is now, oh, it's kind of like 20 past five. So I think I'm gonna get ready and go and pick him up. He's found the new toys, but as soon as I turned the camera on, it made a beep and he heard it. Apparently he had a bit of a, what do they call it? An emotional day at nursery. So we had a big cuddle and he's now gone off to play with his toys. They're far more interesting than me, apparently. If you can hear a crinkling in the background, it's the giant silver foil sheet that he's got to play with. It is coming up to 20 past six now. Normally he'd be in bed at this time. However, I checked on his like nursery page and he apparently had two naps today one of which was quite late this afternoon. It was, he didn't wake up until like 3.30. He now normally just has one nap at like 11.30 in the morning and then that's usually a maximum of 40 minutes and that's it, he doesn't have any other naps in the day. So the fact that he's had a nap quite late, I don't think he'll be going to bed until a bit later today. And he's quite happily playing with his toys here, so I figured I'd let you play as long as you needed to, my lovely. Oh, I've just had like a wave of nausea and I'm really hoping this doesn't turn into like a bug and it's just, a moment, might get myself something to drink, something to snack out. Okay, I had a few bites of some salty crisps and that seems to have made me feel better. This is what I was talking about earlier, by the way, like I have to be so careful with what I eat if I haven't eaten enough, like savory food versus sweet food, I feel ill if I've eaten too much savory, like if I just eaten too much in general, I feel sick, like I have a very <coughs> fine line between feeling full and feeling <coughs> nauseous. Anyway, we've remedied that situation and it is now 6.30, so we're gonna go and put this little one to Bye-bye's. I don't think he's ever gone down that fast before. I didn't want to jinx it, so I left it 10 minutes, but it's now 10 to seven and I haven't heard a peep out of him, so I think he's gone down. So for dinner, I've decided to do some chicken nuggets and chips just because it was easy to do. Um, and I feel like I need something fatty and salty, uh, given that I felt so rough earlier from the sugar. So that's currently cooking. I've also got some mange too that needs eating up. So I'm just gonna put some water on to boil for that. And then I'll use the water from that in the gravy. I bought a pack of sugar snack peas and baby sweet corn on offer and they're looking a little bit worse for wear now so I'm just going to cook the um, mini sweet corn as well and then I can cut them up and put them in the fridge because Oren loves these, I've discovered he absolutely loves baby sweet corn. my dinner. I'm sat here wondering two things. One, why my hair is still doing this. Honestly, like what, what is with this piece of hair today? I'm gonna need to do something about that. And two, looking at the state of this living room, which he literally spent like, I don't know, 20 minutes in this today and it already looks like this. Complete and utter chaos. Can't be bothered to tidy it though, so it's gonna stay looking like that. Finished my dinner and now I think I'm going to run myself a bath and then I'm going to get into bed and read a book for the evening. So I think in that case, I will end the vlog here. But thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed seeing this day in the life. It's a little bit different than my usual ones because normally I film my like parenting days, but today obviously I filmed one of my freelance working days. Obviously I'm insanely lucky and privileged to have a job that allows me not just to work in a way that fits best with my son, but also with my health as well. And like I said earlier, like it's really small little things that I adjust and you know tweak and stuff but just having the flexibility to do that makes such a difference and if any of you have like understanding employers you'll probably like be able to concur with me that even if it's you know just a minor something it can make your life so much easier to be able to work in a way that works best for you. Also managed to get everything on my to-do list done today which is great, I love a fully ticked off to-do list and so yeah that is a day in my life as a freelance solo mum. Thank you so much for watching guys, do please subscribe. Thank you as always to my precious star superstar members who support the channel that little bit extra each month. Thank you so much, guys. I hope you have a really great week and I will see you soon. Bye, everyone. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.